All right, let's unpack this whole world of EVTELs, electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. They're getting a lot of attention these days. And uh, you've sent us some really interesting stuff, a news article and a blog post, both about Joby Aviation. They seem to be one of the yeah. companies, you know, really kind of leading the charge in this whole space. Yeah, and it seems like they're really ambitious. You know, Joby's not just like messing around. They're getting serious investments and forming these partnerships with big names. It makes you think they're trying to be a, a major player in all this. For sure. Like that $200 million public offering, that's a big statement. And then working with Delta, Uber, plus they have that $55 million contract with the Department of Defense. Right. It seems like they're trying to, you know, build up a whole system around their technology. Exactly. And that defense contract is interesting. It kind of hints that EVTEL tech could be used for a lot more than just moving people around town. Logistics, emergency response, maybe even stuff we haven't thought of yet. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. But before we get ahead of ourselves, can you break down what makes EVTOLs different from helicopters? And why is everyone so excited about them? Sure. So imagine a helicopter, but instead of that loud gas guzzling engine, you have an electric motor. It powers multiple rotors. That's the basic idea behind EVTOLs. Now, using electric power has some big advantages. They're much quieter than helicopters. They don't need fossil fuels, and they could be even faster and more efficient too. Okay, so quieter, greener, and potentially faster. I can see why people are getting excited. The article said that Joby's planning to launch commercially in 2025. That's not that far off. Mm -hmm. Imagine just calling an air taxi like an Uber and flying over all the traffic. That's the idea they're promoting. And it's really captured people's imaginations. But we need to remember that EVTOLs aren't a solution for everything. There are different designs out there, each with its own good and bad points. You've got multi-rotor designs. They're great for vertical lift, but maybe not so efficient for long distances. And then there are tilt-rotor designs. They can take off vertically and then fly horizontally so they're faster and have more range. So it's not just about replacing helicopters with electric versions. There are all sorts of designs popping up for different uses. This is starting to feel less like science fiction and more like, you know, the near future. It is, and that's where it gets really interesting, because this isn't just about building a cool new aircraft. It's about changing how we move around cities and even beyond that. Think about what it could mean for urban planning. Instead of sprawling suburbs designed around highways, we might see denser, more vertical cities, and people could live further from the city center without spending hours commuting. So EV tolls could actually change the physical landscape of our cities. That's incredible, but I'm sure there are concerns too. Like, what about the cost? Is this going to be a luxury for the wealthy? That's a key question. And it's something that Joby and other companies in this space need to address. If EV tools are going to truly revolutionize transportation, they need to be affordable for everyone. And even if they figure out the affordability issue, there's still the question of how to fit all these aircraft into our already crowded airspace. Mm -hmm. We're already dealing with packed skies. How do we manage thousands of EV tools flying around above our cities. Right. And then there's those skeptical voices in the blog post. They're questioning whether this whole EV tail thing is just hype, empty promises. One person even called Joby a vaporware company, meaning all talk and no action. That's a pretty harsh thing to say. Do you think there's any truth to that or are they just being overly cautious? Well, there's always risk with new technology. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement. But we need to remember that Joby hasn't actually delivered a working product yet. They've got a lot to prove. So a healthy dose of skepticism is a good thing. We need to see what's real and what's just hype. Absolutely. But the progress they've made so far, the funding, the partnerships, the technology they're working on, it all suggests they're serious about this. They're laying the groundwork for a potential paradigm shift in transportation. But in the end, it's up to them to deliver on their promises. Okay, so we've got this incredibly exciting, but still mostly unproven technology. It has the potential to reshape our cities and how we live. What else stands out to you about Joby's approach based on what you've read? I think their focus on building partnerships is key. By working with established players like Delta and Uber, they're not just building an aircraft, they're creating a whole system. They're tapping into existing infrastructure, resources, and customer bases. And that could give them a big advantage in the long run. It's like they're weaving themselves into the fabric of our existing transportation networks. Right. Rather than trying to create something entirely new from scratch. That's smart. Exactly. And that defense contract shows they're thinking about a variety of applications. They're not just focused on getting you to work faster. They're exploring how this technology could be used for everything. From logistics and emergency response to potentially even changing national security. 
Okay, so we've talked about the hype, the potential, and the skepticism around Joby and this EV tail revolution, but we've only just touched on the potential downsides. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges you see beyond affordability and noise concerns? Well, safety is going to be a huge hurdle. These aircraft will be operating in busy and complicated airspace. We need to develop strong regulations and thorough testing to minimize accidents. And what about cybersecurity? These aircraft are going to rely heavily on software and interconnected systems. A single vulnerability could be disastrous. You're right. Cybersecurity will be absolutely essential. We need to make sure these systems are resilient and protected against hacking or sabotage. The stakes are incredibly high when you're talking about aircraft flying in urban environments. And we can't forget about the environmental impact of making and disposing of these aircraft. Even if they're emission-free when flying, we need to think about their entire life cycle. That's true. Sustainable manufacturing practices and responsible end-of-life management will be crucial to minimize any negative environmental effects. We can't just assume that because they're electric, they're automatically green. It's more complicated than that. It seems like for every potential benefit, there's a challenge to address. It's a balancing act, weighing the excitement of this new technology against the very real concerns that come with it. That's how it always is with technological innovation. It's rarely a simple equation. We need to approach it with both enthusiasm and critical thinking, carefully considering the potential risks and benefits before fully embracing this EV tall revolution. It's interesting to think about how much this could change things. It's not just a new gadget, you know? EV talls could completely reshape our world in ways we can't even fully understand yet. Yeah, it feels like we're on the edge of a really big shift, right? And like with any big tech leap, there are going to be some bumps along the way. We've touched on some of the downsides, but let's dig a little deeper into those societal impacts, both the good and the bad. Absolutely. One area where we're likely to see big changes is the job market. The article mentioned new opportunities in logistics, tourism, and urban planning as this technology takes off. It's exciting to think about new industries popping up around EV doles. We can see a need for specialized maintenance crews, air traffic controllers trained to manage these new types of aircraft, maybe even EV doll architects designing vertiports and figuring out how to integrate them into cities. Exactly. And think about the ripple effects. If EV tolls become a common way to travel, it could change how goods are shipped, how emergency services are provided, even how we design buildings and public spaces. So many possibilities. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows, is it? We also need to think about people losing their jobs. What about taxi drivers, truck drivers, even pilots? What happens to them as this technology develops? That's a legitimate concern. We can't just ignore it. Any big technological change can disrupt things. It's important to think about those consequences and find ways to deal with them. We don't want to leave people behind as technology moves forward. So are we talking about things like retraining programs mm -hmm. to help people transition into new jobs within the EV toll industry, or even something more radical like a universal basic income to provide a safety net as automation becomes more common? Those are definitely ideas worth considering. We need to be proactive in tackling these challenges and making sure everyone benefits from this technology, not just a few. Okay, let's change gears for a bit and talk about the environmental impact. The article mentioned EV tolls helping create a more sustainable transportation system. But we talked about this earlier. Just because something is electric doesn't automatically make it green. You're right. Getting rid of fossil fuels is a big step in the right direction. But we need to look at the whole life cycle of these aircraft. Where do the materials come from? How much energy does it take to make those batteries? What happens to the batteries when they're no longer usable? So it's not just a simple swap of gasoline for batteries. Mm -hmm. We need to ensure those batteries are sourced responsibly, that the manufacturing process is as environmentally friendly as possible, and that we have systems in place to recycle or reuse those batteries when they're done. Exactly. It's about looking at the whole picture and considering the environmental impact from beginning to end. We need to be aware of unintended consequences and try to create a truly sustainable system, not just one that pollutes a little less. Now, one of the most interesting things about this EV toll revolution is how it could change our cities. The article talked about how this technology could lead to changes in urban planning and architecture. Can you help us visualize that? What kinds of changes do you see happening? Imagine a world where commutes are no longer a big problem. Instead of everyone crammed into those crowded downtowns, we might see denser, more vertical cities. People could live further away from those traditional city centers without sacrificing accessibility. So instead of sprawling suburbs built around highways, we might see more spread out urban hubs connected by air taxis. That's a pretty radical change. 
What would that mean for how we design buildings in public spaces? Well, think about rooftop vertiports built into apartment buildings and offices. We might even see floating vertiports on rivers and lakes, connecting different parts of the city seamlessly. It's almost like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's becoming more and more likely. It's an incredible vision, but it raises questions about fairness and access. If air taxis become the main way to get around our cities, how do we ensure everyone can afford to use them? We don't want a system where only rich people can enjoy this new technology. That's a crucial point, and it's something we need to think about from the very beginning. We don't want to create a two-tiered system where only the privileged have access to this new form of transportation. So are we talking about things like carefully planned fares, subsidies for low-income residents, or maybe even public EV toll networks that work like our current public transportation? Exactly. We need to be proactive in making sure this technology works for everyone, not just a select few. We need to think about fair access, affordability, and how it fits in with existing transportation systems. Okay, let's zoom out a bit and think about EV tolls and global connectivity. The article mentioned this briefly, but I think it deserves a closer look. It's a fascinating concept, right? Imagine hopping on an air taxi and traveling between countries as easily as we travel between cities. It could revolutionize international travel, making it faster, more convenient, and maybe even cheaper. That's like shrinking the world, making it more accessible and interconnected. But I wonder about the downsides of that increased connectivity. Could it lead to cultural homogenization? The disappearance of local identities? Or maybe even make existing global inequalities worse? It's a double-edged sword, right? It definitely is. More connectivity isn't always good. And we need to be aware of the potential negative consequences. It's important to find a balance between promoting global cooperation and protecting cultural diversity. We need to think carefully about how this technology is used and make sure it connects people in positive ways, not erase the unique things that make different cultures special. It seems like every potential benefit comes with a challenge to think about. It reminds us that technology isn't a simple solution. It's a force that shapes society in complex and often unexpected ways. And it's up to us to navigate those complexities and guide this technology in a direction that benefits everyone. I couldn't agree more. We need to be active participants in shaping this future, not just passive observers. We need to ask the tough questions, consider the unintended consequences, and make sure this technology is used in a way that promotes fairness, sustainability, and the well-being of all. Okay, I want to bring it back to you, the listener, for a moment. Imagine yourself in a world where EVPLs are as common as cars are today. How would you use them? Would you embrace this new way to travel, or would you be cautious? What opportunities do you see? What concerns do you have? It's a fascinating question to think about, isn't it? How would this technology change your life, your city, your world? Take a moment to really picture it and think about the possibilities, both the good and the bad. Because this isn't just some abstract idea, it's a potential reality that's taking shape right in front of us. It's a lot to process, but that's what makes this topic so interesting. It's not just about futuristic gadgets. It's about the future of how we live, work, and connect with each other. It's about the choices we make today and how those choices will shape the world of tomorrow. And those choices are being read right now. The decisions we make about regulations, infrastructure, accessibility, and sustainability will determine what kind of world this technology creates. It's a responsibility we all share, and it's a conversation we need to be having now. Well said. Now, we've been focusing on the big picture. But let's circle back to Joby Aviation for a second. We talked about that comment in the blog post calling them vaporware. And I think it's worth revisiting that skepticism, considering everything we've discussed. Yeah, it's a good reminder that we need to be a little skeptical when looking at new technologies. It's easy to get swept up in the excitement, especially when you have charismatic CEOs and slick marketing campaigns painting a picture of a revolutionary future. But in the end, actions speak louder than words. Joby has made some progress, but they still have a lot to prove. They need to deliver on their promises, address those concerns about safety and affordability, and demonstrate that their technology is more than just a flashy concept. Exactly. It's not enough to just generate excitement. They need to back it up with results. They need to show the world that their vision is viable, sustainable, and truly beneficial to society. So while we should be excited about the potential of EDTLs, mm. we should also be critical. Don't just take their word for it. Demand evidence. Ask tough questions and do your own research. Make sure you understand the complexities and the challenges, as well as the potential benefits. 
Because ultimately, it's up to us as informed citizens to decide whether this technology lives up to the hype and whether it's something we want to embrace as part of our future. It's a shared responsibility, and it starts with being informed and engaged. Okay, before we move on to our final thoughts, let's look beyond Joby Aviation for a moment. What are some other companies or developments in this space that we should keep an eye on? The EV till landscape is vast and changing rapidly. Well, there are several other companies making waves in this area, each with its own approach and vision. Companies like Lilium, Ehang, and Archer Aviation, they're all developing their own EV tall aircraft with unique designs and features. It's fascinating to see all the different approaches. Some companies are focusing on air taxis for cities, mm -hmm. while others are looking at cargo delivery, emergency response, even personal flying vehicles. It seems like there are so many possibilities emerging. Exactly. And innovation isn't just happening in the aircraft themselves. It's also happening in the infrastructure that supports them. The battery technology, the air traffic management systems, the regulations that will govern this new airspace. It's a whole ecosystem developing around eVTOLs, and it's moving incredibly fast. It's tough to keep up. It certainly is, but that's part of what makes it so exciting. It's a rapidly evolving field with the potential to change how we live, work, and travel. And it's a future we're all shaping together through the choices we make, the questions we ask, and the actions we take. All right, we've covered a lot of ground today, from the technical details of EV tolls to their wide-ranging impact on society. Before we wrap things up, I always like to ask our expert for one key takeaway. What's the most important message you want our listener to remember from our deep dive? For me, it comes down to this. The EVTL revolution is more than just a technological advancement. It's a huge societal change. And it's a change that we all have a part in shaping. It's not just about watching this technology develop. It's about actively engaging with it, understanding its complexities, and guiding it in a way that benefits everyone. That's a powerful message. And it's a great reminder that we're not just along for the ride. We're active participants. Yeah. And the choices we make today will determine what the world looks like tomorrow. So stay informed, stay engaged, and keep those critical thinking skills sharp as we navigate this exciting and uncharted territory together. Well said. Now, I know we've been focused on the practical aspects of this EV keel revolution, but I want to end our discussion with a thought-provoking question for you, the listener. It goes beyond the specific sources we've talked about today, but it builds on the ideas we've explored. Are you ready for one last mental leap? I'm ready. Let's take that leap. Okay, yeah. lay it on us. What's that mind-bending question? All right, so imagine EV tolls are everywhere, like cars. How would that change our whole idea of borders and countries? Whoa, that's a deep one. It wasn't directly in the articles, but it fits with what we've been talking about. Hmm. Global connectivity, urban planning, even how society might be disrupted. And think about it. If anyone can just hop in an air taxi and go anywhere, how would that change how we see distance, borders, the lines on maps that separate countries? It's like the whole world turns into one massive city. Those national borders might not seem as important anymore, not just physically, but for culture and the economy, too. Right. Would we see more communities that span across multiple countries, new ways of governing that go beyond traditional borders, or maybe new conflicts as countries struggle with this easy access and what it means for their power? These are all things we need to start thinking about. It's pretty mind-blowing. This EV tall thing isn't just about technology. It's about a whole new way of looking at the world. And that's why it's so important to be having these conversations right now, to think about what might happen and start figuring out how we want to handle this future. Because the choices we make today the rules, the infrastructure, the values we focus on, all of that will shape what kind of world this technology creates. It's a world full of possibilities, both exciting and maybe a little scary. And it's a world we're all creating together. So I want to leave you with a challenge. Picture this future. Really think about it. Ask yourself how you want to be a part of it. What role will you play? That's a really important point. We're not just sitting back and watching this happen. We all have a part in shaping how this technology develops. Exactly. This isn't about passively observing the EVTO revolution. Mm -hmm. It's about actively taking part, making informed decisions, and working together to build a future that benefits everyone. That's a great way to wrap things up. Thanks so much for leading us through this deep dive. It's been really thought-provoking. Always happy to explore these topics with you and, of course, with our listeners. Until next time, keep those questions coming, keep learning, and keep diving deep 